is okay. But now you would have to go to a com commercial kitchen, so go to a restaurant or a cafe, and make the food, then you could sell it. The same applies with honey. So you can't sell honey unless it's been um, processed in a commercially licensed operating boat. And that's what this here is, and also out the back. So this is what we refer to as the extraction room. Okay? So that means that we can actually extract honey out of the, out of the box, and we can put it into a bottle, yeah? we can label it, and then we can then sell it. Yeah, and so that's what this room here is. So Nick, who was the inspiration behind this, he wanted to make sure that we actually had a room like this so that we could support local beekeepers. So that means that we get beekeepers during the season, they bring us their hot boxes of honey, and we extract the honey for them, and then that means that they can bottle it and sell it, and it gives them more money, which means that they can then get more beehives, which means that there's more bees, and what are bees good for, Maybe. What do bees do that are really good for flowers? They exactly, they pollinate flowers, which makes yeah. lots of fruit and vegetables for the earth, doesn't it? What would happen if the bees weren't here anymore? Yeah, well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have honey. That's exactly, well done. No one has actually said that to me. High five. Good man. And what else do you think might not happen? Like what would happen to the fruit and vegetables if we didn't have honeybees to pollinate? Yeah, they wouldn't be here anymore, would they? No. Yeah, come on in. Um, so yeah, so that's the important thing, is making sure. And so if we support local beekeepers, that means that there's going to be money that they've got, which will give them more hives, which gives them more bees. The fireplace is just on the other side of the wall. That's why it gets warm in here, and we've had the fireplace going all day. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's one of the things that we wanted to do, set this up. So during lockdown, Nick and I were extremely lucky because we were referred to as an essential business, so we could carry on operating, ha-ha, behind closed doors. So we had about 84 of those boxes there that were full of honey that we had to extract and put into jars. Level four? Wow. Yeah, so yeah, so lots and lots and lots of honey, so about 200 kilo of honey. Imagine, to, imagine eating 200 kilo of honey. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, so that was quite cool. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to set up this room. And the other reason is all you people here today. So you get to learn how honey is made. And so the next time you open a jar of honey, you'll go, oh, those little girls, they did a lot of hard work. I'm going to look after this honey. And you'll go back home and you'll say to yourself, okay, what else can I do to actually help the bees? So flowers in the garden, no chemicals. Do you know what the, flav the favourite colour that bees like when they go to a flower? And you've actually got one of them on. Blue. Yeah, they love blue. And they love lavender as well. So if you think about all the herb garden, yeah? I love lavender. Yeah, exactly. And have you seen bees all over the lavender? Fantastic. All right. Bumblebees. And you know what bumblebees do? They also pollinate flowers. So yeah, so they are good for the environment as well. They also make honey. The only problem with bumblebees is what they can't do is they can't produce that wax. Okay, remember how I showed you in the observation hive that it had that layer of wax that they put the lid on? Bumblebees can't produce wax, so they can't store honey for their winter. And that's the reason why bumblebees die out over every, every season. Come on over, guys. That's why they die out every, every season, is because they haven't got the ability to store, they haven't got a freezer that they can put their food in for the winter. So that's the difference between bumblebees and honeybees. And so we'll just talk about the third one. What's the enemy that we have to our honeybees in New Zealand? So what's that nasty little flying thing that we don't like? Exactly. Okay, now, sometime in the past, sometime in the past, they may have been able to pollinate flowers. They also may have been able to actually collect nectar and actually process it and produce honey so that they can eat it. But they do neither of those. So they are of no use to the environment. <laughs> a good wasp is a dead wasp. Yeah? <laughs> okay? You remember that? You either go, <coughs> like that, <laughs> or you say, oh, I'm dead, there's a wasp, and then they'll go and kill it, yeah? Because what would happen if a wasp gets near a honeybee? Uh, the wasp will kill it. No? All right. Okay. So I'm 
one, Rosie. What's your name, another one? Sarah. Sarah, would you like to pop up here with Aidan? You pop up here. And then we'll look inside this beehive and you can see what's going on in here. All right, okay. So, this is, well, just turn around, so I'm around the right way. All right. It was a German guy called Langstone. He, does, he studied bees for a long time and he worked out that they liked moving in a six millimeter, six millimeters, tiny, isn't it? Yeah, tiny like this. Because a little girl, she's really small. She's smaller than six millimeters. Now Nick refers it to three eighths of an inch, but I decided I'd move into the modern era and talk about six millimeters. So every area inside this beehive is six millimeters gap. I call it the bee highway. Because what it means, sorry, is that you can have a bee on this side of the frame and you can have a bee on that side of the frame. They're close together, but they can work in conjunction. So one can do work on that side and on that side. Now, if we took out one of these frames and we didn't leave 10 in there and we left 9 and we left that big gap there, do you think that that would be cold for the bees? That big draft? It would be, yeah? And so what would happen is that it's almost like... Today, I never get to say this, it's snowing outside and we leave the front door open. Can you imagine how cold that would be for us? We'd want to close that front door, wouldn't we? Yeah? Well, that's what they want to do here, is that they actually then have to build another wall in the room. So if you can imagine the wall shed, which is that area there, what we would do is that we would put more walls in to make each of the rooms smaller and warmer. Does that make sense? Yeah? That's what they're doing. It's referred to as bridging comb. So it's wax that they have to produce to actually build something in there, which actually closes down the gap. And then once they've done that, they then put insulation in it. Now we in New Zealand would call that pink bats, kind of. We even get liquid pink bats now, so yeah. What they do is that they fill it with, what do you think they would fill it with? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You can come and work with me any day. Mm. I know you live close by. You can come in any day. <laughs> That's what they do. They fill it with honey. And so you can imagine how warm that would be if a wall is beside you and it's actually filled with really solid honey. Yeah. So that's why, as responsible beekeepers, we always make sure that we give them 10 frames per box because it saves them energy having to build that extra wall. Does that make sense? That's really important. Okay. So, if we start off with a brand new beehive, brand new, this is what it starts with. Okay, this is a frame and it's got a sheet of wax. So this is wax that the bees have already produced. You'll see when we go through the capping process, decapping process, that we produce a lot of surplus wax. So that's how wax candles are produced. Beekeepers send all the surplus wax up to a company in New Zealand. They heat it, process it, flatten it, and they put it into sheets like this. Now, who can tell me what the shape is that we're looking at on there? Square. Count how many signs it's got on it. Five. It's got six signs. Do you know what a six-sided shape is? Hexagon. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Well done. It's a hexagon. Now, it's not a square, not a circle, not a triangle, because the bees worked out a long time ago that the shape of a hexagon uses all the spaces inside the frame. Okay. It's the most efficient use of space, and it's the perfect shape for a bee to form. Don't ask me why, but it's a hexagon. So you know what they did? They sent us an email about 150 years ago, and they said, Dear humans, we think the shape of a hexagon is the best way for us to use the space inside the beehive. Can you please help us out and give us the shape to start with so it saves us less work? Yours sincerely, the bees. So, us like humans, as we always do, we sent an email back. And we said, dear bees, thank you so much for your email. Absolutely, we'll help you out. And so what we'll do is we'll put a shape of a hexagon in every single frame of every single box of every single hive all over the world. Yours sincerely, the humans. P.S. Thank you so much for that delightful honey that you make for us all the time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> we started communicating with one another a long time ago. Yeah? So that's what we do. We give them the hexagon shape. Has it always been, from when you started doing this, it's always been a hexagon? You didn't just try it out with another shape at the start? If we don't give them hexagon, they, right. they do the hexagon. Right. So it's them telling us, as in the email coming to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, and this is when, you know, when humans studied bees. Yeah. 
and on this so that they can do something with it. Because at the moment, no honey can be stored in this and no bees can be born. So the queen, queen can't lay an egg until we actually get some foundation done. So this is what it looks like as they start to build the foundation. Yeah? So you see how they've started to build the shape of the hexagon there? Yeah? So they've started to build it? Yeah? So we took this away before they finished it, so it was a, a, a good example. Now what's happened is the older bees had already started to collect honey and they, already, they said to the younger girls, they said, quick, quick, my stomach's full. Quick, I need to put this honey somewhere. And so what the girls did was, okay, right, we'll finish this bit here for you. Will that be enough? So then what they did was they finished that area first. And so then the um, foragers, the older bees that collect the nectar, they then were able to actually deposit the honey into these cells. And then they filled it up to the top. And then what did they do, Aiden? What did they put on the, on the top? It's a, a layer of wax, isn't it? Remember we put the lid on? Yeah? So, bees are like humans, except bees don't have Tupperware in their kingdom, okay? But what they do is that they have wax. And so what they do is once they fill the cell with honey, same thing, if they didn't put a lid on it, what happens when you put a jar of honey on the bench with no lid on it? The bees come. Well, the honey would fall out, wouldn't it? Yeah? So what they do is they put the lid on it, don't they, Ada? Yeah? Cool. So that's what they've done here. All right, now, how do they produce wax? Mm -hmm. This is how they produce wax. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when you were first born, you had a very soft skin, so your mum and dad were very careful how they handled you. Okay, the same thing with the bees. In their first 10 days of their life, their abdomen area here, this bit here, is really, really soft. Okay, so they have the ability to sweat or push out wax through their stomach or their abdomen walls. Yeah, so it comes out here. And then they go with their legs, third and fourth leg, bring it up to their mouth, then they go to that frame, and then they start to make the shape. So that's how they do that. Now, one teaspoon of wax, they have to eat honey to produce wax. All right, so one teaspoon of wax, how many teaspoons of honey do you think a little girl has to eat to produce one teaspoon of wax? Have a guess, Aiden. Three. Nearly four teaspoons of honey. So they have to eat the honey to produce the wax, to produce the foundation, to enable them to actually then store honey. So you can see the cycle, they're kind of going backwards. So if we, if we wanted to produce another beehive, what we would do is that we would give them frames of honey like, like this. We would give them existing frames of honey. So what they would do is that they would go to those frames, eat the honey, tell their body, oh, I want to produce wax. So they consume it, they push it through their walls, and then they go to those blank frames like this, and then they then have the ability... Then they then have the ability to actually use that wax to build the foundation. But they've got to have honey to do it. Alright? So you can't just give a beehive 10 empty frames like this and put the bees in there and then expect them to then to be able to start producing. It just wouldn't work. They would die. You've got to give them the food first. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, imagine if we when we were extracting the honey and we actually destroyed the foundation that they had built and then we gave them an empty frame back again. Can you see they would then have to go back to their freezer to eat more honey, to produce more wax, to build the foundation again? Yeah. So the extraction part of it, this part of it, is really, really particular. We have to be very careful that we don't damage the foundation and we only take the honey out so we can give the frame back to them and they then don't have to do any work. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm going to try and find a one where I might put one up here. Ah, perfect. One I prepared earlier. <laughs> okay, so this is a frame honey where we've actually taken the honey out already. So you can see how, actually, that's it. 
very good frame of honey to say there is not a lot of work that has to be done. Now if I went on the flip side, can you see there's a little bit of damage that's been done to that foundation? Yeah? Yeah, but this one here is perfect. Very rarely we see one like that. Um, so what would happen is they would then have to get some honey somewhere to then fix that bit there, this bit here, and that bit there. Okay, now, this is referred to as a sticky, and you can see why. From a human's point of view, there's no more honey left on here, but from the bee's point of view, this would be like, what's your favorite food, my Aiden? What do you love most of all? Pretend mum's not here. <laughs> what do you like eating? Lollies. Lollies, okay, fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, what do you like eating most of all? Pretend mum and dad are not here, <laughs> and he's not filming. Chocolate, chocolate biscuits. Chocolate biscuits. Imagine <laughs> if we had lollies and chocolate biscuits that just arrived at your front door. What would you do? I know, I'd be excited. If I had jet planes that arrived, okay? <laughs> this is what the bees would, they will be so excited. If I went out now, pretending it's a warm day, because we wouldn't be doing it in the snow, but if I went out on a warm day and took this frame to a beehive, within two minutes, there'd be 5,000 bees on this. They're not on me, they're on that frame because there's so much honey there for them. And so what they would do with that honey is that they would use that honey to process, to turn into wax, to do the repair work, and then they're ready to start storing again. Does that make sense? They haven't had to go to their freezer, yeah, to use their honey to come back to this. Yeah? Okay, so important, very, very important, the wax part of it. And it's a lot of work for the bees, yeah? They, yeah, it's a lot of work. So it would take them two to three weeks in a brand new hive to do 10, you're basically gonna give them two boxes. Each box has 10 frames, each frame has two sides. So that's a lot of wax that has to be produced. So we're really, really careful to make sure that we give them enough food, yeah? So that's important. Okay, all right, so that's job number one. Can all different types of honey bees make <laughs> Oh, the little girl. So, in, yeah, so honeybees in their first 10 days, that's when they produce the wax because their skin is really soft. Mm. After 10 days, their abdomen is hardened somewhat. So, it's like when they're a baby, they're nice and their skin. Let me have their head, the top of the head hasn't quite, whatever that's called, that bit there. Same thing with bees. As, as they get older, they're hard and they don't have the ability to produce wax. Mm. So, it's only the younger bees that do it. Yeah. The girls, not the boys. All right, I'm just gonna wash my, I wash my hands a lot. All right, so that's the foundation done. All right, so then we have to work out everything is sticky. It's my life. Okay, all right. Now, there's two boxes here. You see this? This is where the queen lives, down here. This is where the honey is stored here. So we can call this the palace or in bee terms, we call this a brood box, because this is where all the brood, or the baby, are made. Okay, now, how many queens live inside a beehive? One. Exactly. All right, so that one queen, her job is to make babies. Yeah, okay, so she lives down here. This is where all the honey is stored for their winter. All right, now we don't want the queen up here for two reasons. Number one reason, completely commercial. If you went to the supermarket, oh no, no, you're gonna come in here, and you buy a jar of honey here, you take it home, you lift the lid, you put your teaspoon in, and you get some baby bees as well as honey. Would you like that? No. Not so much. So strictly from a commercial point of view, every single beehive all over the world will have what is referred to as a queen excluder, and that's what this here is. Stops the queen from going from here to here. Now, the reason why she can't fit is because she's too big, all right? So, this is the queen here. She's got a big, big, big stomach, big abdomen, like that. That's her there. That's the boy. That was the one that we saw in the observation hive. Remember the big black eyes that we saw? Yep. So, yeah. So, queen can't fit through here because she's too big. The other one that can't fit is... Exactly, the big, fat, lazy male drone. Okay, so he also can't fit. All right, because he's too big to fit through there. The little girl, she's the one that can come through here, through this here, and come up here and start to store the honey. All right, yeah? All right, now the second reason why we don't want the queen up in here is because in the summertime, when we're actually taking out frames of honey and putting spare ones in and everything, sit on that if you want to. Because concrete's hard to stand on, I know. Um, 
is we're opening, we're opening this beehive, and in the middle of summer time, we've got 50 to 60,000 bees that are flying in and out, okay? So, and we are always careful, okay? So we'll put on a box, or take off a box, or we'll take out the frame, put in another frame, and then what we'll do is that we'll come along, pretend I'm gonna do the lid as well, but what we do is we brush and blow. All right, all good. Okay, all good. And then right at the last second, there'll be two girls that decided they want to go out for a cup of tea, or there's two girls that have been out for a cup of tea and they've decided to come home again. And sometimes we can have a little accident. All right, now, there's only one bee that can produce babies. And who's that? The queen. Did we want anything to happen to the queen? No, because if something happened to the queen, the hive dies. So that's the number two reason why the queen will always be down here. And so then when we're in here, we know we're not anywhere near the queen. There's a couple of times, yes Ada? That's what they're doing with her right now, is they're keeping her fed. So she's got ladies in waiting, and they'll have pretty dresses on. Yeah? Okay? Exactly. I know, I'm being silly, aren't I? Um, okay. All right, so that's the queen. All right, little girls. Little girls, they are the ones, unfortunately Aiden, the girls are the ones that do all the work. Okay, so when they're first born, their first job, can you remember what we talked about with the bedroom? What was the thing that they had to do with their bedrooms when they're first born? Clean them, that's exactly right, because the queen will only lay an egg in a perfectly clean cell. Okay, now, if she laid an, a, an egg in a dirty cell, if the next bee that was trying to be born was trying to form her wing, and she couldn't because there was a lump on the side of the cell, she would come out deformed and she wouldn't be able to fly. That is of no use to the queen because she needs all her bees to fly because flying is the food. Yeah, that's where, that's where they get the food is flying. So she will make sure that she cleans it. And what does she say to the ladies in waiting if it's not clean? Clean your bedroom again. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's what the queen will do. She will lay eggs. So first thing they do when they're born is cleaning their bedrooms. Then these are all their jobs. They feed the babies, keep the babies warm, look after the queen, so feed the queen, groom the queen, and clean the queen. She's a very busy girl. Yeah. <laughs> they also get rid of dead bees. Now, a little girl, she will last about two months. Now, they die everywhere. They can die out on a flower, outside, at the entrance to the hive, and also inside the hive. And one of the jobs of the little girls is, if there is any bees that die inside the hive, is to actually take them to the entrance. So that's another job that they've got. Now the last job that they have before they become a forager, which is when they collect the food, is guarding the entrance. Very important. This is one of the most important jobs for a hive. Guarding the entrance. Two reasons. First reason, Okay, Aiden, what's your favourite food that your mum cooks for you at home? What do you love to eat? Oh, I'm coming to your place, Aiden. It's a caramel slice. <laughs> Yum. All right, Dara, what's your favourite food that your mum and dad make? Pizza. Oh, good answer. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, now, you've got next door neighbours? Yeah. Imagine if you came home and your next door neighbours are coming and eating that pizza. Imagine if your next neighbours had come home and eaten that caramel slice before you came home. How would you feel? Angry. Angry. <laughs> and good answer. So, that's exactly what the guard bees are doing. They're stopping their little girls from next door or another hive from coming in and eating all their pizza and caramel slice, which is their honey. Alright? So, there you go. So, every time in the year, apart from, apart from the middle of summer, that's the entrance size. It's really small. About that. Yeah? Two reasons. Less draft. Imagine how hard it is for them to keep this warm. And if we close it up in the winter time, in the spring, in the autumn, then it's not so cold for them. It's only this entrance here. Okay? So warmth, number one. Two, easier to guard. See, it's an easier area to guard. Whereas that there, they need a lot of bees to guard. So the only time in the season when we open this all here is when there's the 50 to 60,000 bees in the middle of summer. Because you can imagine 50 to 60,000 bees trying to get in here and they're like planes. So it's like Heathrow Airport when there's like, you know, shut down and everything and you've got all these planes in the sky. 
that's what the bees look like. They're all lining up going, want to come in, want to come in, want to come in. So that's the reason why we open the entrance. All right, so what do you think that they would do to a little girl that's from next door to their hive? If she wants to come in and eat their honey, what do you think they would do? They just say, go away. So they just go, go away. And she'll go, no, no, I'm really hungry. I want to eat your caramel slice. I want to eat your pizza. And she'll go, no, no, you can't come in. No, no. And so what happened was, if she doesn't give up, the little girl, the little guard bee, what she does is that she picks her up like a helicopter and a bucket. That looks really cute. So, so it's kind of like, you know, she picks her up. Same, like, imagine picking you up. If you can imagine you picking you up. That's what it looks like. It's really cute. And so it's all, and so what they do is that they pick them up and take them away from the beehive. So it's almost like they're saying, sweetie, this is not your home, but what I'll do is that I'll drop you off at the bus station and you're gonna find your own way home, okay? And so the little girl, she doesn't fight at all, so that no one gets hurt. She mm, right then I tried. And so she, so they'll just drop them off, just drop them, you know, when they fly away from the hive. Now Something else must happen if a wasp comes. So, Zara, what do you think it would do if, if a wasp tries to get in here? This is the enemy. Exactly. So, what do you think the guard bee needs to do? Do you think? Yeah, exactly. And what she needs to do, she needs to let her sisters know that there is an enemy approaching. And it will, yeah, protect the queen. Very much so, Aiden. Okay, so what they do is that they let out, I call it the Russian machine gun pheromone, because it's a Russian word. It starts with K, and it's about that long, and it kind of means the same thing, because it kind of goes like this. Girls, girls, quick, quick, there's an enemy coming, quick, you've got to help me, quick, quick, come on, come and help me. Because one honeybee to one wasp, the honeybee struggles, and she would generally probably have to sting, which ends her life in order to save the hive. But if she's got five or more of her friends, then the honeybees will always win. Because what they do is that they cocoon the wasp and they want to cook it. Yeah, they want to heat that wasp. And they want to use all their legs and their antennas to <laughs> like this, yep, and pull the body apart and do anything that they can to harm that wasp so the wasp doesn't get anywhere near to the entrance. Because as Aiden says, if that wasp gets anywhere near the queen, we're in trouble. Yeah? So that's really important for guard bees. Yeah. Okay, so the last job they've got is collecting things from flowers. I'll go to the adults now. Okay, what are the two things? What are the two things that they collect from flowers? Nectar. Nectar, yep, which is turned into honey. Well done, yep. And pollen. Very good. Good yes. source of protein. Aiden yes. <laughs> <laughs> set a very high bar. I know, I know. It's funny. He's like, yeah, you see, you set a really good bar with all these good answers that you've had, Aiden. Yeah. So, yeah, so pollen is really important, especially in the springtime, because that's when lots and lots of babies are being born. Good source of protein for the babies. Yeah. And the nectar is what they turn into honey, which is what they eat during the season, but it's also what they store for the winter. Okay? All right. So, do you know how they collect nectar? <laughs> they've, they've got two stomachs. We've only got one. Cows have got four, okay? But honeybees have got two. So, Honeybees are just like us, they get hungry, so they have their own stomach, which they use to eat food and keep going. But the second one they've got is a storage container, and that's where they swallow the nectar. So the nectar, when they go to the flower, it's about 70 to 80 percent water. So it's really easy for them to swallow into their honey stomach. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, pollen, that's a completely different story. And both my gentlemen here today don't have beards. Have you ever grown a beard? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Good answer. Good answer. Okay, if you can imagine putting your beard in the middle of a flower and doing that with, this is what would happen. So the honeybees have got a beard all over their body. Yeah? And so when you see a bee in the middle of a flower, it looks like they're doing a dance. And that's exactly what they're doing because they want to collect as much pollen on their beards as they can. Then what they need to do is that they need to get it out of there into their baskets. 
So, they've got a pollen basket on their fifth and sixth leg about there. And so what she's done here, you see her basket's sort of full? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So she'll get her, this is where her leg's coming to it, so she'll get her number one, number two leg, take it off her head, push it down here, into number three, number four, so number three, number four leg come in. So she'll then push it down her body and go plop, and then plop. And so once her baskets are both full, she then flies back to the beehive. But what she's got to do first, is she's got to make sure both her baskets are full. Because what would happen if she was uneven? She would have to fly back to the beehive like that. It would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? Yeah, so she's got to be balanced. Yeah, both her baskets have got to be full. That's how they collect pollen. All right, that's the little girl. All right, big job, big job, little girls. All right, the queen, last story. Okay, now, the queen, she needs to make lots of babies. So, in the middle of summer, she'll lay, how many eggs do you think the queen lays every day in the middle of summer? Lots, think of it, think of big number. Big number, big more, more zeros. Up to 3,000. How many siblings do you have, Aiden? One half, brother. <laughs> Fantastic one. Oh, but that's okay, your mum is very special. Can you imagine having 2,999 sisters <laughs> and brothers? Can you imagine that? That'd be I a lot of names to remember. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have, sorry, I have had people before where they've said to mum. Okay, so now. The same as female humans, as she gets older, it's a little bit tiring for her making all those babies. So she has less ability to lay a fertilised egg. So she makes less babies. But they need 50 to 60,000 bees in the middle of summer because one bee, one lifetime, sorry, how much honey do you think one bee will produce in their lifetime of two months? How much do you think they make in honey? <coughs> Four teaspoons? One. One teaspoon. One teaspoon. Five grams. That's 250 grams. So now, the next time you eat honey, you will then go, I'm going to be very careful and I will look after this honey. One bee, one lifetime, one teaspoon. Okay? Now, here in Central Otago, so I'll just talk Central Otago, they need 30 kilos of honey to get through the winter. Okay, because we've got four months of dormant season. Um, four months of dormant season where one, it's too cold for them to fly, and two, there is no nectar for them to collect to turn into honey. So they need 30 kilo. So if this queen is not making the babies, which then produces the bees, which then collects the food to then turn into honey, that beehive is in trouble, hey? Yeah? So if that queen, say, only lay 500, and it's in the middle of summer, the nursing bees will go, mm. I think we need to make a new queen. So what they do is that they wait till the queen goes to bed, and then what they do is that they have a committee meeting. They sit around the round table, okay, and the elder, the oldest nursing bee sits at the front, and then what they do is that they sit all around in little chairs, and they need to make a vote. But what they want to do is they don't want to let the queen know that they've made a vote. So the little elder, she holds out little pieces of paper to all the little bees, and the little bees have to make a vote. Shh. <laughs> Okay. Are we going to say yes in favour of making a new queen or no, we'll keep with the old queen? Are we going to say yes because we need to, need to make new babies? Yeah, so we're going to say yes. So all the little bees, they say yes and they hand out, they bring back all the pieces of paper to the elder and she counts them all up and they all say yes. Shh, don't tell the queen. Okay. So we wait till the next morning, the queen wakes up, she has her breakfast and then she's off to work for the day. Okay, so what the queen will do is she'll back into a cell, she'll lay an egg as she normally does. The nursing bees will follow on behind and feed the egg as they normally do. But what they'll do is that they'll feed that egg something special. Okay, remember how we talked about the pollen and that's a great source of protein for the babies? Yeah, well, what we need is we need something special, okay, to make a queen cell. Have we ever heard of royal jelly? Royal jelly in a capsule or a tablet form? Yeah, yeah. Now, I've sent an email to them and they haven't come back to me. I don't know whether it's strawberry or raspberry yet, but when I find out, I'll let you know. But it's jelly, don't know whether it's strawberry or raspberry, okay? That's what they feed the cell. 
So they produce it from their saliva glands, okay? Now, they won't just feed one cell that raw jelly, because nature sees that sometimes one cell won't work. They will feed up to 10 cells this royal jelly, okay? So it comes from their saliva glands. So after four days of doing that, this is what we see, is we see cocoons over, see, these are queen cells, okay? Because they filled these cells so much with royal jelly, is that it's turned it from one that's coming this way to one going that way. And this is generally why they will actually pick the top of the frame, because it's easier for the queen to form over the top of the frame. Okay? So, after four days, they then come along, put a layer of wax at the entrance. The queen will form this way, so she's going to come out this way. And then she'll start to form her body. After 16 days, she'll true through that entrance and she'll emerge. Now the other ones don't, they, they just don't survive, okay? So there's one little queen, she's here, and then the old queen, what she does, is she recognises that there's a new queen, and what she does is that she retires. So she goes and retires with the goldfish and the rabbits. <laughs> that's where she goes, okay? All right, so that's the cycle of the queen. All right, so now the five years cycle starts again. So the queen can survive five years, little girl, two months, Little boy, three months. The queen can survive five years because she doesn't fly at all. All right? But she'll be replaced because if she survived five years, she's not making any babies. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you put one of these out in the wild, can you put it out there with no queen in it and then they form a queen? Well, how do you get a queen in there? Yeah, remember, the queen has to lay a fertilised egg. You have to have a queen to make a queen. Good question. Yeah, so the queen is the only one because she's got this belly full of S-P-E-R-M. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but how do you get her in like when you put a one out in the wall, like do you guys have a So there is a, yeah. So there are specific queen breeders. So they breed queens. And then we then get a dozen sent over to us. Or it could be that we go into an existing beehive and we see that there's a queen cell there, or that there's many of them, we will take one and put it into a, a cell. But no, good question. You've got to have a queen to make a queen. And so therefore that's where your queen breeds come in. It's quite specialised. What's a queen? And they have little nursing bees that keep them warm and fed. Yeah. And this is their food that sits at the bottom. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. And so it's like all wrapped up, it's got like insulation and so it's nice and warm. So the queen's yeah, so that Jen hands underneath mine. Want to turn around and show mum? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, honey. Yeah, it's sticky. But you can wash your hands. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, you got it? Good girl. Wanna show show dad? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's in it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we refer to as a three quarter depth. See the difference in the size? Okay? Alright? I'm oh, sorry, I'll let you No, 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 all good. <laughs> oh my god. And the one that we are looking at is a three-quarter depth. So, if it's below my core, I'm okay. So if it's here, but if I have to use my upper body, it is, especially those 50, it's like, like no way. <laughs> That's how much I weigh. You know, so, it's like, Christ. So yeah, so there's more and more beekeepers that are actually going to the three-quarter, what do I do with it? The three-quarter depth ones, because they're just ever so slightly easier to handle. And it's quicker for the bees to finish which means that we can replace it and, you know, yeah, so that's the reason why. Okay, all right. Now, if we put this inside the extractor, which is this thing here, without taking that capping off, nothing happens. We could turn it on for three days. The only thing that's going to happen is the actual frame will break because it's a wooden frame. So what we need to do is we work out how to take that capping off. All right, so pop off Sarah, so we're going to bring this over. Never. Oh, actually, no, you probably don't need it. All right, come on over, guys. I'm going to just wash my hands again. Do this. And we're going to do something magical. All right, you ready? All right, now, us ladies might call this a head drive. You might call it a heat gun. But it does exactly the same thing. Oh, hang on one second. Sorry, I'm missing one piece of equipment. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 
All right. Okay. Are you ready? Are you okay? Okay, it's fine. Good. All right. Are you ready? Cool, hey. So it's just enough to take that half a millimetre of clapping off and no more. Yeah? Yeah, would you like to help me? Yeah? Come on. It's like a painting motion. Good man. Fantastic. Alright, cool. And we'll get Zara to finish it for us. Yeah? Good girl. Oh, good strong hand. Good girl. Alright, so we'll go down. Now I'm going to do that bit there. Cool. And that bit. Marvellous. Fantastic. And guess what? On the other side. <laughs> so what we might do is we'll ask the adults who would like to help me. Yeah? You want to come along? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's like a painting motion. This is very therapeutic. This is, I love doing this because it's just, it's really cool to do. It's like it's melting. It is, isn't it? It's like a, well, candle, it's like a wax candle when we're melting it. Yeah, we're just coming along and we just do this. Yep. Want to do some? Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're all good? Mm -hmm. okay. um, you all right? Cool. Mm -hmm. oh, all right, you finish her off. Oh, sweet. Beautiful. All right. And, and what did I say? What was the one of the lovely things that we were going to do, Aiden? We were going to be eating honey, weren't we? Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to be very gentle. Remember, we don't want to damage the foundation. So, have a little taste, okay? But then remember, we'll be very gentle. We don't want to damage the foundation. Good. Mm. I think you got you doubled up. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't matter because it goes through the filtering system. I do it all day. <laughs> you want a taste? Come on in. Good. <laughs> Alright, everyone had a taste? Mm. Oh, different finger. Oh, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. All good. Okay, alright. So now this goes in here. Okay. So it's like a spin cycle of a washing machine. Alright. So now we've taken the lid off. What we're going to do is that we're now going to apply pressure by actually spinning it around and around. Yep. Now, if we're really quiet, we can actually hear the splatters. See that splattering? That's the honey falling out. Because we've taken the lid off and we're spinning it around and around, it's like a towel in the spin cycle of a washing machine. You know how all the water, if it goes really, really fast, the water goes to the outside of the machine? Yeah. That's exactly what's happening here. It's like a washing machine. Yeah? And That's so, full of honey. Exa exactly, it is honey. And this is now, you can put your hand against here. See how it's just not cold, it's just warm. So the honey is going to hit the side of that, and because it's not cold, it's going to fall to the bottom. Yeah? And here is where the honey is going to fall out of what we've just made. Cool, honey. So easy, very easy. Now, while it's doing this, this is probably about two or three minutes, there is a flower, so a little bit of, so one thing I didn't talk about was the bees being near to their supermarket. So, I know you're a local. Who who travelled here from somewhere else? Okay, so when you, you came to accommodation, and then when you left that accommodation, you needed to find out how to get home. Yeah? Okay, all right. Same thing with the bees. The first thing they do when they fly out is that they need to know how to get home. Okay? So it's called an orientation flight. So they'll fly up, they'll see a shape, see another shape, see another one, another one, go back to the landing strip, they'll go back out a little bit further, they'll see a tree, they'll see a road, and they'll see a house. And what they'll do is that they'll say, okay, if so I've got the house on my left, and the tree on my right, and if I have that, and I can see that box, that's where I'm, that's how I'm gonna get home. The next thing they need to do, what you needed to do when you came here, was that you need to find something to eat, as in an ice cream, yeah. okay? <laughs> All right? 
So, which supermarket do you go to? Well, Pag and Sally. All right. Are you going to go to Cromwell? No. Exactly. Because yeah. your closest one is Pack and Save. Yeah. It's minus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you go to the closest supermarket. You're not going to go to one that's on the other side of town or 30 minutes away in Cromwell. Yeah. Same thing with the bees. As soon as they find their closest flower, do you know what they're going to do? Is that they're going to go back home and they're going to tell all their sisters, I found a supermarket that was really close to our home. This is where you need to go. And do you know how they do it? <laughs> 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 they do it through dance yeah and what they're doing when they dance is they're actually letting the scent of the flower out yeah and how, which way they start dancing is the direction they need to go and this is kind of what they're saying oh guess what if you go across the road go around that house watch out for the tree and the dogs and the cars you're going to see this flower and it's blue and it's amazing you've got to go there and this is what it smells like yeah. That's what the dance is. It's called a wagtail dance, and the closer the flower, the faster the dance. Yeah? So, they will find the closest flower. The reason why I was talking about this is that there is one flower in the whole world, or well, here in New Zealand, it's one flower that they don't like. It starts with M. Manuka. They do not like the Manuka flower. Now, could you remember way back to when I said that when they swallow the nectar, it's 70 to 80% water, so most of it is a water content. And if you can imagine processing water through your saliva glands, it's quite easy, isn't it? Yeah? But if you had a lump that was part of that that you swallowed, a little bit harder, isn't it? So, the Manuka flower produces this natural antibiotic called methyl glyoxal that we refer to in those NGOs, you know, and that's what makes Manuka so good for us but it's a lump as part of the nectar. So when the bees go to the nectar and they swallow the nectar, they swallow this methyl glyoxal, this lump at the same time. So when they go back to process it through their saliva glands to add all the nutrients that makes it really good honey, they have to process a lump. Not nice. <laughs> it's really hard for their bodies and it takes up energy and so it actually makes their life shorter. They are searching for another flower, okay? So that's the only instance where a bee will try and find a flower that's further away as in a crumble, yeah? As if it's a manuka flower. And this is why legislation changed, and this is why you see this numbering system in, is because there are a lot of beekeepers in the North Island that were selling manuka honey that wasn't actually manuka honey, because the bees had found another flower. Does that make sense? It's a really dark colour, dark brown dark amber yeah now the other thing with manuka another reason why it's expensive is see how easy that was we took off the caffeine threw it in and within a couple of minutes i'll show you how it's all fallen out Simple job by producing nice honey like is everyone enjoying that honey mm -hmm. but if you process it incorrectly like if you heat this as opposed to warming it um if you cream it the incorrect way if you need to cream it yeah it then produces like a real imbalance so clover honey sometimes has that bit that's sitting up at the top yeah so we had one we had a supplier that produces and we had that bit and we sent it back and so in the summertime it's just already gone through so because i've had that warming all day um it's the reason why it's gone through quite quickly in the winter time it would already set because honey like it just likes to be warm all right so what we're going to do is that we are all going to we're going to give you all a jar of honey to take home with you. Yeah. I know. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> one for you. One for you. One for you. One for your wife. One for you. One for you. One for you. One for you. Another two out. <laughs> that one and you yes. hang on to that one for dad. I'll go and get you a couple of bits. Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, no. Are you sure? Because I can give you one of these. It's just uh, people on planes that can't um, overseas. Oh, I don't know. Right. Once you put the lid on and then you take it off, because you've got to put it on, then that thing comes off. So you're just going to end up with the same result. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.
Yeah, that's going to come up again. Oh, I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So we need to put the honey in. <laughs> All right, okay. Sorry, if you want to come. Oh, you've put your lid on as well. Yeah, darling. Yeah, you can do this. Yeah. So that's what happens when you put the lid on. All right, you saved my one. All good. All right, are you ready? Now, I play a little game. No drops of honey on the floor. So how do you think we're going to do it, Zara? All right. Now, there's still a lot of honey to come out, but can you see where those little holes are? Yeah, where the honey's already come out. Yeah, see on the other side. The same mm -hmm. again, still lots of honey, but there's still little holes. See the little holes that, where the honey's come out? And there's bubbles. There's bubbles too, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how easy it falls out. So if we put it in for another five minutes, it would all be empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so see, it's all out here, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, hey? Yeah. So is that ruined now? No, no, so it's fine. Still, oh, so gosh, yeah. the honey can just stay in there for it a just, long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. wooden plastic. Wooden, after a while, they tend to bend and crack. And it's out. Okay, I'll just sneak past the All right. Now, what you'll see is that you'll see honey come out. I'll just give it a bit of a lean. Um, you'll see honey come out, you'll see wax come out, and what you just saw there was a little bit of a bee body. Yeah, because they die everywhere. You'll see all sorts of things. So that's a big layer of wax. Another bit of layer of wax. Lots of wax in there. Yeah. And so this filtering process will make sure that the bee one teaspoon. So how many bees have just produced that little bit of honey that you're going to take home with you? All right, who's next? Quick, no drops of honey on the floor. Oopsie oh, daisy. What's up? What's up? Best place I've ever had. Oh, I'm not eating that all the way home. Oh, I could just imagine my own back. Yeah. The beach whereabouts? Yeah, let's go to Hawaii. Let's, let's go to Hawaii. Hawaii? Hawaii. Fantastic. <laughs> if you were going to go somewhere exciting in the world, where would it be? Oh, Maldives. Uh -huh. Maldives. Maldives, fantastic. <laughs> Hawaii. Fold <Fold'em>, Hawaii. <laughs> oh, I'll go to Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Hawaii. If you were going to go somewhere in the world, where would you like to go? Tonga. Tonga. No, Tonga. 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 Somewhere outside New Zealand. Florida. Sri Lanka. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Me, I'll go to Canada because I'll go and visit my sister and family because my little niece is just about to have a little baby girl. Oh, yeah. um, and um, Calgary. Oh, nice. So yeah, so if you if we're all getting on a plane, just close your eyes and imagine. <laughs> um, and we don't have to go and quarantine. Is that you would need a label that tells you that it is honey and it is New Zealand pure honey. Hence that that thing there wouldn't be broken. Yeah. And this is what this is. But we're gonna do it anyway, because we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna take some photos, and you're gonna put a label on your honey. Sound cool? Fantastic. So what I'll do is I'll just do group by group, if that's okay. Marvellous.